Next up on the Cosmic News Network, first contact with Joshua Putt. Good morning, Earthlings. Good. How you doing today? Good. How you doing today? Welcome morning, to First Contact Radio. How you doing today? Welcome to First Contact Radio. To talk about all these things I'm talking about is because in life, everything is energy. Every single thing that's out there. Yo, it's First Contact with Joshua Poet. He's a man on the mic just in case you didn't know it. Covering news from all around the globe. From the weather and space to UFOs. He'll talk politics and make you open your eyes. Conspiracy theories and government lies. He'll dig it all up and try to find the proof. Cause it's time to demand the truth. It's time. First Contact it's time. Radio. We it's have time arrived. to demand the truth. Good morning, Earthlings. How you doing today? Welcome back to First Contact Radio. Glad you could be here. Let's look at what we're dealing with today. All right, today is the 6th of November. We've got two signs here in our unconscious mind telling us that we're making a transition from one sign to another. We're going from Sagittarius, where we were as the moon sign, into Capricorn. Sagittarius is a fire sign. Capricorn's an earth sign. So remember, just think of the energies. You have the fire, the water, the air, and the earth. Fire is ideas. Water is emotions or love. Air is words, ideas, or words and action. And you take those things together, the ideas, you apply love to it, you put action to it, and you create form. The form is the bottom physical thing. So with, with the form, we're always looking to see what are the elements that make up that form and then try to to backwards engineer if we need to or understand you know what this is so the Capricorn that earth energy it's that byproduct so we want to learn with that energy since it is the byproduct and we understand it's not the be-all end-all we want to not get stuck in that physical we want to look past that to see what was created that what inspired that physical because that idea behind it is going to be a bit more important so in this case here with the Capricorn there is the idea implied to it of looking past illusions. Okay, and the tarot card, the card that represents this would be the card of the devil, which is all about looking past the illusions in life. Don't just get caught up in the physical, because that's just an illusion. Look past the physical to see what's deeper, what's really out there. It's also about the practical use of how we're going to practically use the energy around us. What are we going to create with it? Okay, so these are important things. Also, Capricorn is, is also a... On the positive side, you look at it as the mountain goat who's continuing to climb that perseverance to, to get something done. So this changing of the guard takes place later this afternoon, 3.44 p.m. Pacific time is when that aspect begins to take effect. And we're going, so we're going from ideas, fire, to earth. On the outside, we've got water for the conscious mind, which is Scorpio. So we got that water, and then we're going to go to earth. Okay, the two are going to be working together. Just think how they work together, water and earth. Too much water, too many emotions can overpower the form, melt it, you know, um, sink it. Or too many, uh, the other way around, too much dirt, earth can overwhelm the water and, you know, spread that out, snuff that out. So always important for the elements to work together nicely. Kind of like baking a cake. You got to know how the elements are going to work, the recipes, the ingredients. All right, as far as any squares, triangles, nothing that we need to be aware of for today. So we're going to move on. Our moon phase, we're at 13% of the way full, making our way upward to a new moon. The Mayan Oracle, we're at a seven-tone day. Seven tones are called the resonant tone of attunement. We have the kin in the middle which is the day energy, which is the hand, the blue hand of accomplishment. So we have the resonant hand guided by the storm, or the resonant or attunement of accomplishment guided by our ability to catalyze energy, to use energy. Uh, think of a storm. A storm gathers energy like storm clouds gather the energy and then shoots them out in some way or another. Lightning, rain, thunder, whatever it is. Whatever that gathering of energy is that makes up that storm is part of it. Okay, altogether, our phrase for today is I channel in order to know inspiring healing. I seal the store of accomplishment with the resonant tone of attunement. I'm guided by the power of self generation. Space weather, 
We are at 347.9 kilometers per second. We did get hit by or have a flare the other day. We haven't uh, fully felt the effect of it yet, but we will. Um, planetary K index is between a 1 and a 2, so we're still quiet like we were yesterday. Our coronal holes are about the same, but if you recall from a couple days ago, the coronal holes we had, we were indicating, led, it was indicating that the 6th and the 7th we were going to be feeling the effect of the solar wind coming off those. So that's what's going on down here on Earth. We're being affected by the sun. Our M-class flare possibility is like yesterday, 45%, same as the X-class. And geomagnetic storm activity is about the same as well. But as I said, we're going to see some changes in that because of these flares and the activity, the corona holes that's taking place up with the sun as we speak. And if you've noticed, you know, the sun has looked pretty bright, you know, hasn't it? I mean, to me, it seems like it's been very, very bright yesterday. I've been out, you know, doing sun gazing. I've, I've told you um, now since, I don't know, it's been four months. I'm up to 23 minutes of sun gazing a day and add 10 seconds more. And I notice, because I'm out there just looking right at it so often now, um, there is a definite brightness at times, you know, and it seems almost like a whitish type sun, doesn't it? At least that's what it seems to me like, this this white light. Um, it's not quite the yellow type sun that, that we're used to seeing. Something has changed and shifted in it. All right. This is Suspicious Observers report for today. Here we go. Good morning, folks. We're starting with Cinnabon, the volcano that slept for nearly 400 years, erupted in 2010, and has continued to erupt. Locals evacuated as the eruptions continue to get bigger, ash falls complicating it, and pyro flows are visible as well. Top weather watches for the Philippines as the weaker storm has moved on to hit Vietnam on the left. A super typhoon is about to become the third major storm to hit the Philippines in 10 days. Let's hope for all the best for those in the line of fire. They brought some buoys back online, flanking my favorite one. There are minor deviations already. NOAA sharing their new gadget, called NOAA View. Now when you go there, there is a tour video if you need it, fairly simple explanations, a lot of metrics you can pull up, a lot of different time scales, and the ability to set it all in motion. Should be fun to get this involved in the research and modeling moving forward. By now many of you know we took an X3.3 solar flare last night, from that same group we gave focus yesterday. You can plainly see here on the SDO views, there is no major CME not by a long shot. Now every X flare is going to pop some ejecta, but this will be minor. According to Cactus, the CME looks a bit more moderate than minor, but almost all of it is going south, with the fastest bits coming nowhere near Earth, and they would have slowed significantly by the time they reached 1 AU. Now the current Enlil spiral at 5 AM showed a pre-X flare CME from another eruption that day, same group, so it's not a bad gauge for the X flare either. A glancing blow is technically possible, but again, it would be minor, small, and might not even catch our shield at all. Definitely nothing to worry about on this one. In fact, this is still pathetically small for a solar max uptick. The X6, for example, that we took in 2011 is not considered a big time solar flare, and that was twice as energetic as this one with 10 times the CME. People ask if Ison is making the sun flare. This is the weakest cycle in a hundred years, even with this uptick. Ison's not affecting the sun in that way, not yet. But if you want to point out a change, it's weaker flaring compared to everything else we know about the sun. Anyway, back to real science. You remember our delta hunt yesterday morning. It appears necessary once more. Now, as of today, the developing umbras behind the leading positive could be mixing within that penumbral group. But for now, the story is still the backside large umbra, both positive blue and negative red umbras within the penumbral group. Now, I'm not calling out an X-flare from this region, and nor did I call one yesterday. But the Delta hunt is the hunt for a potential to pop X-flares, and if it happens again today, that backside portion is likely to be the culprit. Well, it looks like the coronal and umbral magnetic temper tantrum is finally ending and calming now. It wiped out all power to nearly nothing from the Earth-facing position, and the quakes took the day off. Still have a few uptick signal locations, 
and an always relevant uptick near the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. Switching to satellite view, you can see where historic landslides have taken place there, likely the cause of some East Coast tsunamis in the past, and for me, probably a greater threat than the Canary Islands. Corona Hole is facing Earth today. Shots of our star and the weather to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone. Alrighty. Good report. Okay, moving right along. So, I want to continue on with this piece on Bill Donahue talking about the Kabbalah. I like what he's saying. Um, very insightful. And I'm going to play 10, 10 minutes of it today and the last 10 minutes of it tomorrow. And then Friday I'll get on to something else related to the same topic. Okay, so let's continue on. This is Bill Donahue talking about... ...of life is actually... I don't know, Paul, if you could get in a little bit. I give the folks an idea approximately what we're looking at. But that tree of life basically is a diagram of the divine realms of consciousness within your head. That diagram is for what's located between your ears. Okay? All right. And that's the Sifra or the tree of life. Now, it's inner wisdom, remember. This isn't written. The wisdom activities of God that manifest manifest within our core. Let me write this down so I get it. S-H-A-K-T-I. S-H-A-K-T-I. In Kabbalah. Shakti. Shakti. That's the energy which flows outward from God. So Shakti flows outward from God and comes to you. That's what they believe. Okay. That's Shakti. Shakti, incidentally, means white. Now this is the kicker. And we're going to get to the point here why traditional Judaism was very, very hostile to the Kabbalah. Do you know why? Feminine. All feminine. It is the feminine God. And nobody, including Christians, can deal with that. What do we say today? Tammuz came to the earth wound up in the Netherland down in the bowels of the earth to save the people who were captive, who had to come down to save him and bring him up? Easter. The goddess, his sister, Easter. What that mean? Jesus Christ down in the bowels of the earth, who had to save him? The Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? Feminine. It is the feminine of the part of the God. This, you know that you can't, in most churches, you can't even, they wouldn't even allow a woman to stand up on a pulpit. And, and do you know, they have totally missed it because they've taken macho control of the whole thing. And if anything, if you want to talk about women's live, why was it necessary? Most of it is necessary because of the sexist discrimination that, against women that originated with religion. And yet here it is, the splendor of the Kabbalah of which most of your Bible is written in the tree of life, Shakti, God's wife. She is the one that moves in and does the work. Shakti. Now, you will note on this tree, there are 10 numbers. And those 10 numbers are the 10 fundamental powers of all being. Incidentally, if you look at number one, you'll see that number one is Kether, or the crown. Do you see that? That is what is sung about in many of those gospel songs. I'm going to have a robe and a crown, and they really picked a real crown. It's not. The crown is that higher consciousness which brings you through the various other nine stages into Malkut, which is the kingdom of God. So the crown is the higher consciousness. In Revelation 2.10, it says, I will give you a crown. See? If you meditate, if you follow Jesus Christ, if you enter within yourself, you will receive a crown. That means you will receive access to the high realms of divine consciousness within you, if you'll do that. 1 Peter 5, 4 says, you shall receive a crown of glory. Once again, you see the crown, and that's where it came from. It's Kabbalah. The word crown used in the Bible is used in the Bible because it came from the Kabbalah. It was Kabbalah teaching, the crown, that part of the divine aspect of of your consciousness. Now what's amazing, as I said about this, is that the Kabbalah is a feminine potency of God. This feminine spirit achieves its fullest expression in the kingdom, which is Malkut, which is number 10. 
So then conservative Jews, they couldn't deal with that. Any more than conservative Christians could deal with that. The feminine principle of God, that's almost, you know, that's, that's, doesn't that sound foreign to you? The feminine, can you imagine God with a skirt? Huh? But, see, you can't, because you, it's, it's unheard of, you can't even consider it. Because you've been brainwashed that it can't be, but it is. Even before this, back to the times of ISIS, and back be, before that of the times, uh, of the days of Zeus, all of it, goddesses all over the place, women, the power that came from the feminine principle of God, which was spirit. So the Kabbalah, then, is the power of speech. It is the power of sound. Let's make that. It is speech, it is sound, and it is word. Word. Psalm 135 says, I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait, and in his word I do hope. Now, many of you have heard that the word of God is the Bible. People on television will shout and say, this is the word. Read. It is not. It is not. Okay. I, I, this Bible has been written, rewritten, translated, abridged, revised, changed. You can find whichever Bible you want that pleases you, you can find. You can find the New Jerusalem, the Old Jerusalem, the Revised Standard, the Unrevised Standard, the Good News, the Bad News, the Left Side, the Right, whatever you want. There's thousands of them. And God's Word cannot be changed. God's Word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. This is a book. And wherever you have anything written down, there'll be some guy that'll mess with it. And if you knew how many hands, we were talking this morning about the Acts of John and the Gospel of Thomas, the apocryphal books, which the Council of Nicaea sat upon, listened, and condemned because it was mystical. Couldn't deal with it. It was kept out of your Bible by men. See? The Word of God has always, in essence, been Christ consciousness. In the beginning was the Word. This was not written. There's mistakes in it. They're doggone right. Sure, there is mistakes. There's, there's one part very interesting where, 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 the, where, where the Apostle Paul said, uh, Jesus Christ, after he rose, appeared to the 12. There wasn't 12, there was 11. He didn't even know. He never knew. What did he know? He didn't know that Judas committed suicide. There's many. But when you move above the written word, the literalism up to the divine word, all error ceases. All error ceases because the divine consciousness, which is the Christ consciousness, takes you into that same Bible, clears away all of man's words, and gives you that which is the true aspect of the word of God. Once you meditate, once you take this Bible and meditate and go to the Christ, go up into the mountain, into the cave with the Christ, this becomes every single word absolutely true. But if you're going to literalize it, you're going to violate it because the Apostle Paul said, be not a minister of the letter because the letter kills. And this Bible has been an excuse for many people to kill. And I hear evangelists still coming on television, well, you know, war is okay in some circumstances. You heard of when God said he must go in and kill men, women, and children. Well, these people had to be taught a lesson, and they justify all of this horror reading literally. You can justify anything you want. Remember, did you ever hear the story about the people that play Russian roulette with the Bible? They open a passage, and they get a message from God, and then the guy opened up a passage one time, and it said, and Judas hung himself, and <laughs> he turned it off. I don't want to hear that. You can't play with things like that. Revelation 19, 13 says, His name, which means His way, Christ is called the Word of God. Did you ever see that? Turn to Revelation 19. It's the last book in the Bible. Revelation 19. Revelation 19 and verse 13. It's on page 237 in the Little Bibles, but you can find that quite easily uh, since it's the last book. Revelation 19, 13. What does it say? And is with clothes, the vesture dripped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And it doesn't mean Charlie or Jesus because Jesus' name wasn't even Jesus. It means the way. When you understand something in the East, when they say, I am doing it in his name, means I am doing it in the way that he said to do it. It means the way. His way is the word of God.
And when you talk about the way, remember that Jesus Christ in Matthew 7, 14 said, narrow is the way which leads to life and few there be who find it. So the word or the way, Kabbalah, Zohar, is the feminine spirit principle of God. It is virgin mind. Isn't it interesting? One of the most magnificent mystical things that has ever happened on the face of the earth, Kabbalah, is feminine. It's an entire feminine principle. It's not a masculine principle at all. It is the feminine side of God. And, and, and you read about it in the Bible, and very few people know it's even there. It's a speech force. See? Here's a Kabbalah. Let me, let, me give you, let me give you a part of the Kabbalah that you can understand in, <coughs> in, uh, in, in, in the New Testament. In the book of Romans, chapter 10. The book of Romans, chapter 10. Okay? Verse 9. It says in Romans chapter, and this is, a, this is one that uh, the contemporaries hang on to all the time. If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Two things you've got to do. Confess the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Most people will come down and say, I am confessing the Lord Jesus Christ. That's not going to do it. Confessing the Lord Jesus Christ means I have an experience. I obey Jesus Christ. I do what he says so that I can say to you, Jesus is Lord. That means you're practicing the single eye. That means you're entering within yourself. That means you are shutting down the thoughts of the mind. And that means that this is manifesting outwardly and that you're reaching out in love with the mind of Christ to others all around you. If you're doing that, then you can say, Jesus is Lord. If you're not, you can't. Because Jesus Christ himself will look you right in the eye and say, why do you call me Lord? Luke, <coughs> Luke 6, 46. Why do you call me Lord and not do what I tell you? All right, there we go. We're going to leave that there today. Very interesting. You know what he said about the, uh, the Bible? It kind of ties right in with the idea of what I was saying with the astrology. The Bible is the physical product, right? But it's a byproduct of the ideas, fire, the emotions that were put in, the love, and the actions. So if you just look at the Bible literally, it's the illusion. You have to be able to look past the words, the physical words, to see what's beyond it. And when you do and you really see the ideas and the love and the spirit that's part of it, it's different than the physical words. Because the words can get manipulated. We all know that. We, we, you know, he gave some examples. Words can get manipulated, but the idea, the true spirit that's in there, that's what you find when you really delve into it. And it's not just the Bible. It's many books that are very uh, prophetic type books like this. So that's it for the Kabbalah for today. I'm going to finish up the last part tomorrow, and let's get on to our UFO news, which is up next. This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. All right, Dirk, thank you very much. Today I have four stories. Story number one comes to us from the International Space Station. There's our object in question right there. This was from this month. It said this UFO was recorded on live cam at the space station yesterday. It seems to be a disc. In the photo above, the top part has the original photo, and the bottom is the photo that's more light added to it, so we can see the UFO more clearly. Okay. It looks like a solid object out there. But it, is it some type of top secret military craft or an alien craft? Well, if it's top secret alien craft or a uh, government craft, it certainly isn't anything that uh, is being announced to the public. I guess that's why it would be top secret. Okay, but there's our object in question. Very interesting indeed. Now we're going to go over to this story here. This is Russians believe strange lights are extraterrestrial origin. Okay, you may remember we saw something like this. Reports are coming in of a mysterious glow over several parts of Russia. The unexplained lighter glow has been reported over Kirov, Alzme, and Koloma. Witness reports states that the glow emanated through the clouds and seemed to spiral out into massive light shafts that pulsated and rotated. The phenomena lasted about 20 minutes before blinking out. Some other shots of it. No official explanation of the ph phenomena has been released, but many residents who witnessed the event claim it was supernatural in nature, possibly an alien spaceship. Others are attributing the strange lights to Comet Ison. All right, well, you can look at the pictures, see what you think. Moving on, here's a 
from UFO Digest, Southwest UFO Triangle Theory. It says, I received the following article from Andrew Oren, and it concerns the publishing of a new book, Southwest UFO Triangle Theory, due to be published this December. It is a pretty good theory and bears investigation. I invite you to read the following and enjoy. This is from Dick Vanderplug, who is writing here. It says, the triangle is not a thing. It is a place, but is not dead, very much alive. It bears new life every day that with time will grow, age, and die to leave again room for new births. It could be as timeless as the earth and sky, yet it is marked with the history of our time, the human race. The triangle opens up to the possibility that the human race may not be alone in the universe. It is a concept to question. We have been interacting with visitors. Have we been at interacting with visitors here on Earth in the Southwest for thousands of years? Dear UFO readers, I'm writing to tell you about my first book on the subject of UFOs. I have to say it's about time that I wrote something, having reviewed the subject for some 22 years now. I'm hoping that you will enjoy this work, which started with the 1947 Roswell incident and led me to other places. So there you go, another book on the subject. Check it out. And the very last piece here comes to us from Filer's Files. This is about Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein's secret alien document. In special reports, this week's cover message, Albert Einstein top secret alien document, glass dome and face found on moon surface. Okay, well, let's get down to where the story is here. And there's Albert Einstein. In June 1947, Albert Einstein and Robert J. Oppenheimer together wrote a top-secret six-page document entitled Relationship with Inhabitants of Celestial Bodies. It says the presence of unidentified craft is accepted as de facto by the military. It also deals with where they come from, what we should do in the event of colonization or integration of peoples, and why they are here. Finally, the document addresses the presence of celestial astroplanes in our atmosphere as a result of actions of military experiments with fusion devices of warfare. Einstein and Oppenheimer encourage consideration of our potential future situation and safety due to our present and past actions in space. How can we avoid a perilous fate? Our relationships with extraterrestrial men present no basically new problem from the standpoint of international law. But the possibility of confronting alien beings that do not belong to the human race would bring up problems whose solution is, it is difficult to conceive. In principle, there is no difficulty in accepting the possibility of coming to an understanding of them and of establishing all kinds of relationships. If these intelligent beings were in possession of more or less culture and more or less perfect political organization, they would have an absolute right to be recognized as an independent and sovereign peoples. Another possibility may exist that a species of Homo sapiens might have established themselves as an independent nation or on another celestial body in our solar system and evolved culturally independently from ours. Living conditions from these bodies, let's say the moon or the planet Mars, would have to have such a permit stable, to a certain extent, independent life from an economic standpoint. Hypothetically, other planets may have life forms. Water has been found under moon and Mars that can be separated into hydrogen and oxygen using an electrical current for the shortwave radiation of the sun. The oxygen could be used for breathing purposes. The hydrogen could be used as fuel. There is indication that the inhabitants of celestial bodies or extraterrestrial biological entities desire to settle here. Well, you can see there's a lot more to this. I'm going to leave it to you. But there you go. If you didn't know that Einstein had discussed UFOs, now you do. That's our UFO news for today. Let's get to our other stories. I'll be right back. What if our government was responsible for some of the greatest crimes against this nation? Would you really want to know? These are big questions, but these questions deserve answers. It's time to demand the truth. So there's another exercise coming up. I want you to know about this one because we know what happens during exercises, right? For some strange coincidence, when these exercises happen, the exact same thing that they're preparing for often happens. What a coincidence, isn't that? What a strange coincidence. So here's another one we should be aware of. This is taking place in Texas, north central Texas, November 
9th through 10th. This is Urban Shield. It says the North Central Texas uh, region is conducting a comprehensive, multidiscipline, multi jurisdictional, full scale exercise. The overreaching goal for this exercise is to increase proficiency levels and identify target capabilities and enhance regional responses to large scale incidents. The exercise is designed to assess the region's ability to successfully respond and manage multiple terrorist events and other emergencies occurring simultaneously throughout the region. The North Central Council of Governments is sponsoring this exercise under the direction of the Emergency Preparedness Planning Council, Region Emergency Preparedness Advisory Council, and the regional working groups with the use of the State Homeland Security Grant Program funds. And it has more information about what's going on. So, basically, if you're in Texas, just be prepared because who knows what's going to go on. But add a drill in California, and then we had the LAX uh, incident. We've got had a drill over at Sandy Hook, and we know what happened there. We had a drill at the Boston Bo Marathon. There was the bombing. On and on and on. We can go down the list of drills followed by live events. The 777 bombings, same thing. And what happens during these events, the reason they're so confusing is because they, an exercise is planned. People come there to work on the exercise, emergency responders, firefighters, police, military, and they go in to do an exercise. But during the course of the exercise, something becomes real. And in the midst of it becoming real, suddenly the dynamics change. And it's hard to determine who it is that is involved with the exercise as an actor and who is there as someone who's really dealing with the real exercise. It's very confusing because the emergency responders suddenly have to make the decision if this is real or this is not. So a very tough situation for all involved. I think that is why we see confusion coming out when there is somebody that is talking about the story and they don't quite get the facts right. And so from one media outlet to the next, we hear all kind of confusion because there is confusion. Because there's a few people behind the scenes that are seem to be pulling the strings, making sure everyone stays on the story, and if they don't always do it, well, then we have different stories, and we know what that's like. It's kind of like um, the latest one that happened at LAX. The police chief was up there talking, and he said, we trained for this exercise not less than three weeks ago. That played out that we played out today, and then you see the FBI agent behind him react. So obviously the FBI was involved to some degree or another. Maybe they were part of those pushing the strings pulling the strings. Okay, Edward Snowden has a new book coming out, or in this case what it's called is a uh, Manifesto for Truth. It says, while Edward Snowden may be reviled as the top, at the top echelons of Western developed nations and is wanted in his native U.S. on espionage charges for peeling back the curtain on how the gargantuan government machine truly works when it is not only engaged in chronic spying but on anyone abroad, but worse, on its own people, the reality is that the whistleblowing revelations have done more to shift the narrative to the topic of dwindling individual liberties abused pervasively in the U.S. and elsewhere than anything else in recent years, and alongside that have led to the first reform momentum of a system that is deeply broken, which also happens to be the topic of a five-paragraph opinion piece he released today in German manif weekly Der Spiegel entitled A Manifesto for Truth in which he writes that his revelations have been useful and society will benefit from them, and that he will theref he was therefore justified in revealing the methods and targets of the secret U.S. service. In the op-ed, we read that instead of causing damage to the usefulness of the new public knowledge for society, it is now clear because reforms to politics, supervision, and laws are being suggested. So, this is a good thing. You know, I know a lot of folks who simply watch the mainstream media, a lot of the uh, sheeple out there, you know who they are, they don't like the Edward Snowden because he goes against what the mainstream media is about. He lets the secrets out of the bag. Well, people who are paying attention, they understand that what th this was a good thing. We don't need to be in a world where there's all these secrets because the secrets are what's keeping us down. We need to be in a world that there's a lot more freedoms, and we're only going to have the freedoms of good people stand up and say something. Remember, bad things happen when good people say and do nothing. When good people speak up, things can happen. Good things can happen. Now, kids, we've got a problem with kids here. Here's a surgeon ADHD diagnosis gets a red flag. 
says doctors sounded a warning Tuesday over rise in ADHD diagnosis saying some children may be needlessly taking powerful drugs intended to correct a poorly understood disorder. Writing in the British Medical Journal, the researchers noted treatment for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder has risen massively in recent years even though its causes are unclear and drugs can have adverse effects. ADHD is a disorder blamed for se severe and frequent bouts of inattention, hyperactivity, or impulsive t impulsivity. Children and young adolescents are those who are most diagnosed with it. But some experts fear the term ADHD may medicalize problems related to a child's personality or maturity level, the effects of poor parenting or other home problems. In Australia, prescriptions for the stimulant Ritalin and other ADHD drugs rose by 72% between 2000 and 2011, while in Britain and Netherlands, prescription drugs roughly doubled between 2003 and 2008. According to the U.S. National Institute of Mental Health, nearly one in every 11 American children aged 13 to 18 and one in 25 adults are affected by ADHD. The analysis also noted that Ritalin and other drugs were meant to be only used only for severe ADHD symptoms, which according to research data may only occur in about 14% of the children with the condition. Yet, about 87% of the children diagnosed with ADHD in the U.S. in 2010 sub subsequently received medication. It is said, warning of unnecessary and possibly harmful medication treatment. So. This is a problem that's going on with the kids. They're just passing out these these mind drugs to these young kids. And you wonder why the kids are having some challenges when they grow up. Because they're not getting a chance to see who they truly are. They're in a medicated state because somebody has said that your mind is not working the way that our mind should. It's kind of silly, don't you think? You get these psychiatrists and therapists and, you know, some of them have some of the worst psychoses and problems that are out there. And yet they project these onto these young kids. And, you know, this is where parents really need to, to keep a tight, tight rein on their kids on what they're doing because if they don't, this is what happens. Schools are stepping over the bounds with this, the way they're, they're sending kids to these institutions and, and labeling them as such. And it's not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. So let me jump over to this story here. Uh, today... There's a, here's a link. This is on the front page of Yahoo News. So I wanted to bring it to your attention. I'm sure you'll be seeing it. Sabilis is telling lawmakers health law cutting costs. All right. Goes on to say that Human and Health Services Secretary Kathleen Sabilis acknowledged problems with the startup of the health care law on Wednesday, but defended it, saying it is starting to drive down health care costs for consumers. In prepared in prepared testimony to a Senate committee. Sibelius acknowledged that using healthcare.gov has troubled website where millions of people are supposed to be able to purchase covers has been frustrating for many Americans. But she told the Senate Finance Committee that the site's problems are being steadily fixed and will operate smoothly for most people by the end of the month. And then she said the insurance marketplace that the law is setting up are resulting in lower cases, citing figures for some premiums that she said are 16% lower than the estimates, blah, 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 blah. Okay. We know all the problems here. What I want to show you is this. Let's look at her body language. Okay, here she is. What does her body language suggest to you? This woman is sitting here. We already heard her say that people don't hire her, so she doesn't care what she says. But look how she's here, and look at her nose, how she has her nose in the air. She's raising her nose up as if she's better than everybody, going to look down at you through the nose. Okay, this is a very arrogant woman that is in a position where instead of coming out and telling the truth is just lying 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 the sad part is Americans know okay Americans know how things work and are kind of outraged that there's 600 million spent on this website I do computer tech work I build websites I know what's involved with it 600 million for that piece of trash that they have come on now it's absolutely incredible that that happened absolutely incredible but when you have people like this which are sticking their nose in the air towards the American people that's what we get again we just need to have these people you know we have to send them love because obviously they're so screwed up and when you send them the love either they're just going to shrivel and melt away or they're going to be changed by it either way it's a good situation because the problem ends alright 
Um, here's a story that has to do with the GMO labeling and it says GMO labeling initiative 522 seems to have failed proving once again that corporate money can buy food secrecy. As of this writing Washington State I-522 looks to have normally, narrowly failed at the ballot box. There's a link here so you can see the election results at 11 p.m. last night the no votes were winning by approximately 55 to 44. Mail-in votes reportedly have not been counted yet but unless a radical change appears in the final votes I-522 will go down in history as yet another example of corporate money buying the votes through a campaign of lies and deception. The grocery manufacturer of America and most of the big name food corporations proved in this campaign theory that they are willing to operate a criminal conspiracy to cheat, lie, and intentionally misinform voters. At stake is their continued way of doing business, secrecy coupled with consumer ig ignorance. Well, that's too bad. You know, not everybody is stupid about this. Sure, the governments and the big business. But did you read the story? There was a story about the Girl Scouts here in America, how they are, or some of them anyway, want to start selling cookies that have non-GMO. That's awesome. And so they started a, a project, this one particular girl and their family, and it spread, and it ended up spreading to other uh, Girl Scout troops, and some of them up in Canada. They don't call them Girl Scouts. And so they're really looking at this non-GMO for the cookies. The sad part of all this, though, is that despite what the kids are doing, leaders within the Girl Scout organization don't think that we they need to really go that way and they think the GMOs are safe so they're for the most part going to keep them in. Just goes to show that kids can be a lot smarter than adults many times and in this regard they certainly are because the adults are just thinking with their pocketbook rather than their heart and that's too bad. But that will change too because I feel highly confident that there's events that are going to take place in this planet that are going to force people to have to choose between their heart and their pocketbook. We'll find out what they choose. Now, here's a story that kind of fits in with that idea. This is on Yahoo News, and I wanted to play this or, or show you because I think this is an example of, well, this is a pretty good example of someone standing by their values. This girl, cross-country runner, was going to run. It says, in the strangest case of purported religious beliefs intersecting with athletic performance, a Kentucky junior cross-country runner voluntarily walked away from a chance to qualify for the state meet to avoid running with the bib number 666, which said, she said conflicted with her Christian beliefs. As reported in depth by the Lexington NBC affiliate Lex18, Whitney County High School cross-country runner Cody Thacker voluntarily forfeited her spot in a regional championship race after her coach drew bib number 666 for the runner. Thacker and her coach argued that she should be allowed to switch the number, but race officials refused the request. Those officials would later deny that Thacker claimed she needed to change the numbers for religious reasons, though the junior insists she was implicit about her motive, explicit about her motivation. To her, running with the number 666 on her chest would have signified a serious breach in her faith. I didn't want to risk my relationship with God and take that number, she told Lex 18. I told them to put to mark I told them to mark up my name because it makes me sick just thinking that my name is associated with that number. Well, that is quite something. So Cody Cody made a decision there. I think Cody made a good choice. She showed, and this could have been some sort of test for her. But she showed that her faith is more important than needing to go and run in a race. Okay? It's a little thing. Some people are probably going to laugh at this of how stupid the girl was for doing that. But you got to stand by your principles. you got to stand by what you believe in. And this girl has come to understand that there's significance around that number that does not fit in with what she believes. And she would be somewhat hypocritical, she felt, if she was going to be running wearing that number. I completely understand, so I applaud her for, for those efforts, and too bad the people on the, uh, the board there couldn't understand and give her another number. It just goes to show where people's heads are these days. They're not paying attention. People are willing to do things, even if they're evil, bad things, that uh, go against a person's integrity just because they're told to do it or just because they're paid to do it or whatever. It's a silly, silly thing. Silly, silly thing. All right. So 
Now we're going to switch gears here. It's very important that we listen to our bodies, right? So this piece here talks about the physical pains and the meanings. Because if we get in touch with our body and we really listen to what's going on, when there's pains in different areas, we can learn something from what that pain's about. And if we tune into it, we can find out that it has something to do not only physically, but also has something to do either mentally or, or spiritually. In the same way with the fire, the water, the air, and the earth, and the earth being the physical manifestation of those products, the same thing with pain. Pain is the physical manifestation of something deeper. So if we go to find out what it is that's causing that pain, then we can stop that pain. So kind of looking backwards in this regards, we're going to look at what the pain is and see if we can see what that pain is related to. So this article says, everything with the physical plane is a manifestation of something on the metaphysical plane. When we speak of abundance, we are really talking about as an abundance of emotional, mental, and spiritual energy. When we fill ourselves to the brim with these energies, and it is the overflow that is manifest on the physical plane, the signs and the symptoms that are apparent on the physical plane lead us to inquire ultimately more deeply into ourselves as energetic and spiritual beings. We tend not to worry too much about this sort of thing. When our body is working well, we are not feeling pain or we are not in the throes of some chronic disease. But when our body feels pain or becomes disabled by disease or accident, we tend to start reaching out for answers. We want to know why. Or maybe we don't even want to know why. We just want to know how to fix something we perceive as broken. Realistically, when our bodies refuse to do what we want it to do, metaphysically, it is not actually broken. It's doing its job. One of its functions is to carry out messages from the higher energetic planes to us. It is then up to us to interpret these messages and take action. Western medicine takes the position that if we feel that we feel pain because we can. Western approaches to pain as the main symptoms of any disease are pretty much limited to drugs and surgery. Treatment consists of numbing or diverting, diverting pain receptors in the body or cutting off the offending organ. While this approach does have its place in acute situations, it is at best a temporary and often harmful way to approach pain or other disharmonies we feel in our bodies. Most often, Western medicine has little to offer us and is incredibly and incredibly makes us wait for our symptoms to become unbearably acute before we can e even acknowledge. So we want to go down here and let's look at some of these things. All right. Now, Louise Hay, she has a book, You Can Heal Your Life. She has, if you ever read that book, I've read through the book and it just goes through all of these things we're going to go through here. It really helps you to understand your body more because this is your your body, your temple, your your energy center. If you know how it works, if you're in tune with it, then you can understand what the signs are that you're getting from it. So you got the head, headaches. Uh, pain always indicates a separation from some sort of something. Usually we say separate from what is the truth. The greatest the pain, the more that something, it more important something is. All right. Uh, if we go down here to the back, we show different pain. Shoulder pain. Uh, shoulders represent burdens and responsibilities. Frozen shoulders, for example, represents a complete unwillingness to shoulder your responsibilities in life. Uh, low back pain. The low back represents support, financial support, emotional support of family and friends, support of God or the universe. If we go down, we look at the legs. shows hips represent decisions in life, especially decisions about moving forward. Pain in the hip is a sign of being stuck, unable to make a decision. Um, we go down further to the throat. Throat represents our will and the ability to communicate both with others and with ourselves. Sore throats, lumps in the throats, tumors all represent difficulties in saying what we want to say. And then stomach represents digestion, not only of food and physical nutrients, but of new ideas, ways of doing things, and accepting the change of any kind. Stomach is nothing more than a big flexible bag of muscle whose job is to ripen and rot whatever is put into it. All right, so there's a whole list more. I just kind of gave some briefs on some of them. But check that out. I think you'll find it quite useful if you, you know, understand what the pain is and you can backtrack. You can figure out how and what that represents in your body. It gives you a bit more understanding of how to operate your body, operate your spacesuit. I, I just look at this as our bodies are spacesuits. And we're just wearing this spacesuit, our spirits inside, and the more that we can learn to operate the controls in this spacesuit, 
the better off we can be. And I believe that we have all kind of controls in this spacesuit. And the more we learn to operate it, the more we learn to work those controls, the better off. So this will be a message from Hilar Hilarion. Here we go. Hilarion's Weekly Message 2013 By Marlene Sweat Lashaw November 3rd to 10th, 2013 Beloved ones, the world teems with newness amidst the crumbling ashes of the old. Every living being and consciousness is being blessed with healing and renewing energies that come from the cosmos. Along the path of each soul, miracles are abounding. Everywhere one looks there is evidence of the higher realms being felt and in many cases, being seen. The greatest miracles are taking place within each soul as they are being filled with the spirit of love from the higher dimensions. Each soul is beginning to express their higher version of themselves and this is having a wondrous effect upon the whole planet. Humanity as a whole is realizing the power for positive change that they carry and are utilizing and mobilizing into positive works that benefit the higher good of all. Many brave souls are standing up to speak their truth and make their claim for that which is rightfully theirs. Throughout the world, those who have been oppressed are rising up and finding their voice. They are demanding change that includes the return of their sovereignty upon their lands and in their daily lives. They are peacefully and through the current legal systems asserting their right to live in peace without threat of violence, abuse, or exploitation. This is a time of change in every facet of human life and ultimately, it is for the good of all. We ask the light workers of the world to send their energies of protection and support wherever they are deemed necessary in support of those individuals who are risking life and limb as they take a stand for a better life and a better way. The world is alive with myriad possibilities and potentials. In each individual's life, a new way beckons with a multitude of opportunities that require careful consideration. People are exploring alternative options that they never would have looked at before. Everywhere. People are making choice for a life that allows more freedom and more connection with others in a community setting. They desire to live with their families and their neighbors in peace and harmony. They desire the expressions of hatred, malice, suspicion, mistrust, jealousy, and greed to be replaced with love, kindness, trust, mutual support, understanding and generosity. These are the inner desires of humankind as they seek to create a change for themselves and their loved ones. We are asking the people of the world to pray each day for the world that they truly desire to live in. As these prayers go out into the atmosphere they amalgamate together with other prayers to create a powerful force to bring to the world the very things that are being prayerfully sought, for each prayer for good to happen contains much power and energy. Those who pray together in groups add even greater power and energy to the field of possibility and this is how the miraculous takes place. It is the people of the world who pray together who are the wielders and weavers of the destiny of their planet. Arise, dear hearts, and make your powerful intentions for a better world known in the cosmos. Let your light shine forth out into the universe as a beacon to its inhabitants that the earth is ready to become a member in good standing with the federation of planets who have been waiting for endless eons for this to occur. As humanity unites in purpose they are joined by other diverse planetary civilizations which are ready to assist their brothers and sisters with their wealth of knowledge, technology, and wisdom. Under the banner of the Creator of all, all are one. Until next week. I am Hyla Ryan. Alright, nice message and yet another message that talks about this great, great change that is upon, upon us. You know, and all we have to do, if we look at the, the signs of what's going on in the cosmos with the planets and the stars, if we look at the comets that are coming around, if we pay attention to the way the Earth is kind of going nuts and there's this daily, daily uh, buildup of all of this apparent lies and negativity going on, we've come to a point we know something has to change there. We know that there's tons of UFOs that are out there. They're appearing more and more. Something's happening, okay? you have to completely be blind to the whole situation to realize something's about to go down um, the gathering of all of what's happening doesn't just happen for no reason I mean we can just think in life when when people and and ideas gather together they don't just gather together for no reason there's usually some event something that's taking place so 
if we just consider that possibility then we could see all the pieces are laid out it's just a matter of when things are actually going to begin and we seem to get indications that those times are right around the corner remember it's a spiritual battle the physical is going to look the way the physical is the spiritual though that's where the main change is taking place that's going to trickle down and affect all of the other the angel message for today is speak your own truth even though it may not even though it may be uncomfortable you will be glad that you did and you and we will be there to support you so speak your own truth even though it may be uncomfortable you'll be glad that you did and we will be there to support you well that's certainly very very important for these days because people are being challenged all the time to give up their morals give up what they believe that girl who didn't want to run with the number 666 she spoke with her truth she stood by what she believed that's important that's very important that we all stand by what we believe otherwise what are we saying right so let's go to our meditation for today close your eyes take a deep breath All right. Take a deep breath. And exhale. Go ahead and take another deep breath. Exhale again. One, imag you'd imagine that everything around you is dark. No matter where you look, all you see is the darkness around you. And you realize that there is light out there. You're just unable to see it. So as you feel around, you find that there is a pool of water down by your feet. And you lean down and you feel around on the ground and you feel the dirt and the mud. And you take some of this mud and you rub it across your face. You rub it over your eyes. And this dirt represents the earth. The physical manifestation of the fire, the water, and the air. And as we rub this dirt and we understand that is the manifestation, that physical product, we begin to understand the illusions that come to, with the earthly ways. And so, symbolically, we're going to take some water and we're going to wash that dirt off. We're going to wash all the mud off our face. And as we do, symbolically, it washes away the illusion that we're looking through. And as we do, the darkness around us changes and we begin to see the light. We begin to see the light and the darkness dancing together, working together in unison. And as we begin to understand the way in which the light and the dark work, we begin to understand that there's a balance, a dance that takes place in life. A dance between looking at both sides objectively. And as we look at both sides and understand both the light and the dark, we realize how in life it is necessary to find the middle pillar, the middle road between these two. So we walk the path. We walk the path of balance. Imagine yourself walking on a balance beam. And as you walk that balanced path, with each and every step you become stronger and more confident. Just keep walking that path and as you do make sure all of your chakras are activated. The crown chakra, the top of the head drawing in the light from the cosmos and that crown chakra is violet in color. And the energy moves down from that crown chakra down to the chakra below it at the third eye and there the light goes from violet to indigo and then this light continues down further yet to the throat and it becomes blue and from our throat chakra the energy continues to move down into the heart space and there green is the color and that energy sits in the heart space and we go back down and we think of our root chakra and imagine that root chakra drawing energy from the earth. 
And we imagine the color red at the bottom of our spine and that energy moves up from there to the chakra above it at the belly button. And that red color energy turns to orange at the navel, at the second chakra. And then the energy moves up from there to the chakra above it, just below the rib cage. And there we see the color yellow. And then finally it moves up into the heart to join the energy that came down from the above and together the energy from the earth and the cosmos meet. So feel the heart filled with love. See that green color and just allow yourself to expand this green color of love out. Filling your body, overflowing your body and then imagine this egg around you. And this egg shape being filled with this light, this green colored light of love. I want you to imagine a Merkava of energy around you. A Merkava, you have a triangle. One triangle with the tip above your head and one triangle with the tip below your feet. And these two inner triangles intersect. Imagine this energetic Merkaba around your body slowly moving around to the right in a clockwise manner and a second chakra super a second Merkaba and superimposed right over that moving around in a counterclockwise direction all the while inside this egg surrounding the entire thing and just feel yourself immersed in this energy. Feel the energy that flows from the top of your head all the way down to the bottom of your feet. Down this central tube of this Merkava. Feel the energy as it moves both counterclockwise and clockwise at the same time. And now let's just imagine the energy moving out forward, this love energy moving out forward in all directions from us. Feeling the room that we're in, the home, the neighborhood, the city, expanding further yet into the state and then into the entire country, across the sea and around the world to all the other countries. And just imagine the world bathed in love. And just see the word love written across the planet Earth. Love. And just imagine this love going down into the hearts of every single being upon the planet. And changing them. Imagine those whose hearts have been hardened now find this love comes into their life and changes them. And they find more compassion in their life and more openness to understand the spiritualness of life. And then imagine there are those who don't want to accept this love energy. Just feel compassion for them that they are not able to understand and just watch as they slowly disappear from existence. For love changes everything. And let's last just imagine the world a world of love with only beings of light and love upon this planet with all the negative evil minded ones gone because they cannot stand in this vibration of love and let's just hold this thought see earth vibrating at a vibration of love glowing bright green And as we do so, let's just imagine all around the space brothers and sisters smiling. The cosmos smiling, the earth smiling. Go ahead and take another deep breath. Exhale. And let our subconscious mind continue on that journey, sending out love as we go throughout the day. And let's bring our conscious mind back to the present moment. And we'll do so on the count of three. Three, coming back to the present moment filled with confidence. Two, coming back to the present moment filled with faith. And one, coming back to the present moment, happy, healthy, and whole. 
happy, healthy, and whole. One more deep breath. Hold it. And exhale. And as you do, just release the energy around you out to the world and go ahead and open up your eyes. And there you have it. That is it, my friends. That is our show for today. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for participating in the meditations and the prayers each and every day. It's so important because we're doing something that can help the planet. And as we keep doing this, and as the whole planet is doing this, just imagine the effect that we're going to have. It's a spiritual battle. And though we can't do anything about the physical battle, because there's far too much craziness, we can definitely do something in the spirit. So let's just keep practicing and doing this, and we're going to change this world into the world that we need it to be, that we want it to be. That's it. Have a great day. I'll be back tomorrow with more news and information. I'll talk to you soon. Peace. I'm out of here.